Hello and welcome back to video number two of my product rendering in Blender series. In this video, I will show you how to create this screwdriver render. Once you open Blender, go down to the scene tab over here and change the units to metric and the length unit to millimeters. Once you've done that, go back to the main scene and delete everything. Add in a mesh cylinder and then go down to the cylinder properties tab here. Change the vertices to eight. Change the radius to 17.5 millimeters and change the depth to 100 millimeters. Then with the cylinder selected, go over to the transform tab over here and change the Z location to 50 millimeters. Then set the origin to the 3D cursor. So the origin is on the bottom of the model. Next, add in eight loop cuts. Go to wireframe mode and drag up this loop a little bit. Then select these two loops of faces and scale them inwards a little bit. Also scale inwards the bottom loop of edges as well. Then go over to the modifiers tab and add a subdivision surface modifier set to two subdivisions. Next, add in a bevel modifier and drag the bevel modifier above the subdivision surface modifier. Adjust the segments to three and the limit method to weight. Then go over to the model in edit mode and select these two loops, add bevel weight to them. Then go to this loop down here, bevel it so it has a face in between. Then extrude this face and scale it inwards. Then select the outer loops and add bevel weight to them. Select the top face and inset it. Then extrude this face upwards and add bevel weight to all of the edges around the circle here. Next, duplicate this top face and separate it from the mesh. Then scale it down a little bit, move it underneath the current top of the mesh. And extrude it upwards. Then scale this mesh inwards a little bit. Next, add a loop cut, drag it upwards a little bit. Add another loop cut, drag it down. Select three vertices on this side and scale them down to be flat and do that to the other side as well. Then scale them both inwards. Finally, scale these two outer ones inwards a little bit as well. So it creates this rectangle shape on the top. Add a loop cut in between these two and scale it a little bit. Then add another loop cut underneath and scale that middle one a little more. Change the bevel mount on this shape to 0 0.3. Go back to the handle shape and select these three faces and then go around the shape and select every other one of these set of faces. With these selected, inset the faces. Then extrude faces along normals and scale it a little bit inwards. The next thing you want to do is parent the screwdriver metal shape to the handle. Then go to the side view and rotate the handle 90 degrees. Then move it over to center it and move it upwards. Set the pivot point to the 3D cursor and rotate the screwdriver so it looks like it's sitting on a flat surface in two points. Next, add in a mesh plane. Go over to rendered view, change the render engine to cycles, and use your GPU if you have that. Set the sample count to 100. Change the world strength to zero so it's totally black. Add in a camera. Then with this camera selected, clear the rotation and location. Move it upwards along the Z axis. 
and change the focal length of the camera to 85 millimeters. Make the camera a square resolution and then just frame the camera to have the screwdriver all in frame. Next, add in the empty sphere and pair a super dot to the sphere so that when you move the sphere, the camera pivots around it. Rotate the sphere so the camera is positioned in a three quarter view. Next, drag out a split screen view and change the one side to the rendered view with the camera and the other one just to the default unshaded view. Add in an area light and drag it upwards. Then split this side panel again and change it to the shader editor. With the handle of the screwdriver selected, add a new material. You can name it plastic or whatever you want. Change the color to something dark. Decrease the roughness. Then add some subsurface. Then duplicate plastic 1 and name it plastic 2. Change it to a red color. Then go around the screwdriver and select faces where you want to assign the material. And once you have selected these faces, press assign the material in the shader editor. Next, with the metal part of the screwdriver selected, add a new material, name it metal or something, and change the roughness down to a very low value and the metallic up to one. Next, go back to the main plastic texture, add a Voronoi texture, add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node set to the object mapping, then change this Voronoi texture to a larger scale so that these little bumps are very small. The goal here is to make it look like a plastic texture that's not all just a smooth texture but has some variation in it. So connect this Voronoi texture to a bump node, to the height socket of the bump node, decrease the strength to a low value of 0.07 or something like that, and plug the bump node into the normal of the main principle BSDF node. Once the textures are done, we can adjust the lighting to a better setup. So scale the area light you added in to something smaller, more of a rectangle, then move it downwards and rotate it around to more of this angle here. Next, add in another area light, make this light a little larger than the other one, then rotate it and move it backwards a little bit so that it's lighting the back of the screwdriver like this from the right side of the camera. Duplicate this light, clear the location and rotation, and move it upwards. Change the scale of this light to something smaller. Then rotate it along the center of the scene and move it outwards. This one should light the metal a little more. Since the metal is very dark right now, we want a highlight on it. So the scene is very bright, but the next thing I'm going to do is add in a dark texture for the floor. So these bright lights will not reflect up onto the screwdriver as much. So add a dark texture, make it pretty smooth so there's a little bit of a reflection. And you can also increase the metallic value so that reflection is really apparent. Adjust the lights a little bit until you like how they look. Kind of takes a little bit of patience to do this part. There's always more you can do, but at one point you just have to let it be and just go with the lighting setup you have. So for this setup, I'm actually going to use light linking. So I set up a light linking setup for these two lights and drag in only the screwdriver. So these lights only light the screwdriver and not the floor. And there's only one light actually lighting the floor as well as the screwdriver. Once you like how the lighting is set up and all the textures look, go ahead and render the final image. You have now successfully completed the second tutorial of the product rendering series in Blender. Stay tuned for the next video.